This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to take a look at vector problems that involve inclined planes. So first, I'm going to talk to you about some ideas about forces, and then we're going to get into those problems. Let's get started. I'd like you to right now imagine that kid who's sitting in a math class or a physics class and sitting there going, hmm, what are all these things going on about vectors and forces? This kid's sitting there, sitting in a chair, listening. I want you to imagine what's happening between the person and the chair. So the chair is holding up this person. Do you ever wonder what's going on with the forces? Well, let me tell you what's going on. So. Right now, there's in that person who's sitting in math or physics class would be sitting on that chair and all the way to that person, or at least most of the way to that person, is sitting right there, is focused right on the seat of that chair. Maybe some of it's on the feet and the floor, but most of it's sitting right there on the butt of that person, smack dab on that chair. Now, what prevents the person from crushing, you know, cracking that chair? Why not go right through the floor? Why not travel right through the floor, go to the center of the earth where you get boiled by molten nickel? Well, let me tell you what's happening. It turns out that the, the chair is pushing back. So the chair, because it's able to, it's strong enough, it's able to fight back. So there's two conflicting forces. There's the person sitting on the chair, there's the chair pushing back. And since those forces are opposite and equal, the person sitting in that physics or math class is in what we call equilibrium, not moving. Now, if you get a really big person on a really weak chair, you're going to crush that chair because the chair can't push back. It's just not strong enough to push back. And you defeat the structural consistency of the chair and you crush it. Okay, same thing can happen with a floor. If you put too much weight on a floor, it could crush. You put too much weight on a bridge, it will crush the bridge. Okay, so you want to create things that are nice and strong. It could hold things up, and then you keep things in equilibrium. You got a nice chair to sit on. You got a nice floor to walk on. Okay, this is an important concept when it comes to the inclined plane, or even just understanding vectors and forces in general, because I'm going to use this thinking that you just got there and a key part of the problem that you're going to see with inclined planes. All right, let's move on. So let's deal with one of those inclined plane problems. So just imagine for a moment that we were dealing with a car that was on a grade, or in other words, an incline, an inclined plane. So uh, I'm just going to create you know, a block because my drawing ability is horrible. But just uh, imagine for a moment that we were dealing with a car. <clears throat> Sad car, I know. But uh, let's say that we were dealing with that. Well, we would know that this car would be exerting some force downward because all, you know, gravity pulls things towards the center of the Earth. All right, well, okay, we need to know what that is. So we need to know what the weight of the car is, right? What it's pulled, that's mass times gravity, which is the force of it being pulled down. Well, I know if it's a Mustang, let's say it's a Mustang, nice sporty car, <clears throat> they go about 3,800 pounds. So I know that this car is pulling down with a force of 3,800 pounds. Um, I don't really care about this force because remember, this car is on a plane. It's on an inclined plane. Some of the force that's being pulled down is going to be separated into two parts, two component parts. Uh, and this is why we study components in physics and in math for just this reason. So there is one force that's being pulled across the plane, on the plane. And then there's the force that's perpendicular to the plane. Okay, now what the heck does this mean? So what I'm trying to tell you is, if this, let's say this car is on a hill, right? It's on a 2% grade. Well, it's not going through the hill. So obviously the hill is pushing back. If the hill is pushing back, that means part of the downward force that the car has is being resisted by the hill. Okay, and I want to negate that. I want to make sure that we get rid of that force 
because we don't have to fight that force. That's a force that's being fought by the ground, or the hill in this case. Okay, so again, remember I said that if it's in equilibrium, it means the two forces are opposite and equal. So what I'm trying to tell you is, and I know this is kind of a crazy idea, but there's a little right angle here. <clears throat> Part of the force, this 3,800 pounds, is perpendicular to the hill, and the hill is pushing back. So this force, this part of this 3800, I can forget about. I only care about this part of the force. That's the force that wants to drag this car down the hill, right? If I, if I take the parking brake off, if I take it out of gear, it's gonna slide right down this hill. And it's gonna slide down with a certain force. That's the force I wanna know, not the force that's going inside the hill. Okay, it's kind of a key point to this problem. Okay, well, I need to figure out something about this triangle. Okay, well, if you were to, well, if I were to back up a second, let me just take these um, numbers away. Okay, I'm gonna continue this until it touches the, uh, this horizontal line. <clears throat> okay, so now what I wanna do is draw a segment going right to this corner. Okay, so you could see that there is a right triangle here. Okay, now again, I don't care about all of the force. I only care about this force, not this force that's going this way. Okay, so how do I get this force? Well, I need to know some angles in this picture. Now, if this is a two degree angle, now keep in mind that this is a right angle, right? There's a right triangle here. All three of these angles, these three internal angles, all have to add up to 180 degrees. So that means this has to be 88 degrees, right? Two plus 89 is 90, 90 plus 90 is 180. Okay, but I have another right angle right here. So these two angles have to add up to be 90 degrees. So therefore this is a two degree angle, just like this. Now I'm not gonna go through this every time I do a problem, but that's the math, right? That is the math right there. So whatever this angle is, it turns out this little corner angle inside this little red triangle, it'll always be the same as the incline. Okay, so it saves you a lot of time in the future. And you could work, you know, kind of piece your way through the math again if you want to see that. But okay, now how do I find this force? Trigonometry. Okay, so let's try it. So I know that the sine of this two degree angle it's got to be equal to the opposite, that's this unknown force, over the hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is right there. That is the hypotenuse. That's how much force that this car has pulling down towards the center of the earth. So this is 3,800 pounds, of course. Okay, now how do I get this force alone, right? The opposite force. Well, that force if I cross multiply, right, I'm just gonna cross multiply, it's gonna be the 3800 times the sine of two degrees. Now, of course, I did this earlier, and uh, it turns out that the answer is 132.618. All right, and um, what would that force be? Pounds. Now, why is this important? <clears throat> why is it important? Because let's say I wanted to do some work, right? I wanted to move this car. Well, in a previous video, we found out that work is force times a distance, okay? So work is for force times a distance. I would take this force, this 132.618. This is the force of the vehicle that wants to slide down the inclined plane. That's the only force I really care about. If I were to match that force, right, and exceed it slightly, I would, I would be able to push the car. If I had to push the car 10 feet, let's say, I could then figure out the amount of work that's done. Well, obviously you could see that's 132.618, uh, and I don't know what the other number is here for the third decimal place, but this would be foot pounds. Okay, and I would have the work that would be required. So let's take a look at another inclined plane problem. So let's say we had another inclined plane, but this time we're moving a refrigerator. 
Okay, now would I want to pick up a refrigerator and move it? No, way too heavy. So what I'd rather do is have a, a slight incline or a, a grade and push it up a grade. It's a lot easier to do. That's why people create ramps for just this purpose. So let's say that this thing is 400 pounds, right? LBS. So I got this 400 pound refrigerator, heavy, it's a beast. And I don't wanna lift it because I'm not stupid. I'd like to be smart about it. So, well, first I need to know what's the incline. So let's say we're dealing with a problem where there's an 8% incline, eight degrees. 8 degree incline. Okay, well, um, what's happening? Well, it turns out that this refrigerator is pulling down with 400 pounds of force. Some of that force is being resisted by the inclined plane. And that inclined plane, it's at a 90 degree angle. Why is it at a 90 degree angle? Because part of the force is gonna wanna slide this refrigerator down the incline. And that means the other part of the force, perpendicular to it, is going to be resisted by the incline itself. So it's like it's pushing down in the, in the incline plane or the grade is saying, hmm, you're not gonna go through the floor or you're not gonna go through the structure. So it's gonna push back. So again, I wanna eliminate that force that's being pushed back by the incline plane. And they're always at 90 degree uh, angles from each other. That's why we study horizontal and vertical forces, which are also at right angles from each other because the math is the same. Okay, now how do we solve for this force? The force of the refrigerator wanting to slide down, trigonometry. So I know that if I take the sine of this angle, the sine by definition is opposite. Okay, well the opposite is this unknown force that we're trying to find. And then here's our hypotenuse. Remember, our hypotenuse is the 400 pounds. Okay, so we're gonna put 400 right there. Okay, now I'm gonna solve for F. I'm gonna cross multiply, just like I did in the previous problem. So F is going to be equal to 400 times the sine of eight degrees. Okay, what is it? I did this earlier, of course, and I get 55. 0.669, Okay, so that's the pounds of force that's pulling this thing down, which isn't so bad, right? That actually isn't a very bad amount. You know, it's a lot easier to push a 55, almost 56 pound force than it is a four, than to lift this thing, which would be a 400 pound force. Now again, work, is force times a distance, which we saw in another math guide video. And this is the whole point. Now, if I push this thing, I'm gonna use the standard 10 feet because I could do this without a calculator. But if I were to take this 55.669 pounds times 10 feet, then I'm going to get the amount of work it would take to do, which is 55.669 foot pounds. Okay, there you go. So that's the amount of work. There's the force. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out literally hundreds of lessons, interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. It's been a pleasure helping you. Have a great day. I gotta work on that. It's sloppy. I gotta clean that up nicely. Man, good thing I didn't have to draw another car. Oof.